Wake up, Detroit. I'm Joanne Watson, and this is your wake up call. When a brown girl child is born, the earth shifts. The sun is at half mask. The moon waits for her first cry. The ancestors set the table. The flowers turn red as blood. This is your land, continent daughter. With tree trunk legs and branches for arms, this is your soil. Black and fertile as your eyes facing an apartheid Jim Crow current past memory. Some of us begin the removal of shackles at birth. We grow into the armor of struggle quickly. We brew courage in our tea, blend bravery into our Sunday dinners. Joanne Watson, you understand nation building is not a part-time job. This dedicated life is sometimes lonely, a vulnerable choice, but it is the only way you know how to operate. You are wired for the movement in your black women bones, even when tired, still fighting, still organizing, still singing morning spirituals. You are born to lead, even in your own family, the eldest of 10 children born to Jefferson and Lestine. You made Damon, Nefertari, Stephen, Maya. Her children always knew she was larger than life. When you are a woman in the movement, you take the children with you on the journey. You bring the babies with you to your college classes. When you travel to Ghana for the first time, it will be with your daughters in tow. When you are a fearless, nationalist, thinking mama, mothering never stops with your own babies. 30 God children and mentees across the globe. The daughter of a ministering mother is already ordained for good trouble. A seer, a prophetic young student preparing for her lifelong role as servant to her own community. When your purse was snatched in a Farmer Jack parking lot many years ago with your kids tickets to run DMC in the purse, you made sure they still got to that concert and even hosted Melly Mel and the Furious Five in your living room, cause queens make it look easy. When you were a single mom, people would tell you what you can't do. Instead, you moved to New York City with all four of your C's to do your necessary work with the YWCA, cause queens make it look easy. Ghana, Togo, South Africa, where is your heart, Mama Watson? Nurturing spirit, bacon melt in your mouth, homemade biscuits. How many hours do you sleep, Warrior Watson, with endless work ethic and blue collar blood racing through your veins? How do we say thank you for your work, your time, your heart? We know you will never really retire. There is a fire on the path to freedom. There is smoke, there is sacrifice. There are stories of justice, of women, of Tubman, Sojourner, of Angela, Asada, Coretta, and Merle, and Betty, and Queen Mother Moore. Some of us know we are ancient, that our marrow is laced with legacy, that we are here to bring light to our daughters. Sometimes it just takes one woman, a mother, a grandmother, a spitfire, a griot, a sister, the only woman to lead the NAACP's largest chapter. She, daughter of the movement, of Rosa, of Irma, she was a birth that gave birth to possibility for other young activists like me, a true D woman, frontline Fatima, Nigerian blood, councilwoman, leader, truth teller, Joanne Watson, social worker, president of the anti-clan network, sister inspiration, dedicated to the protection of girls and the voices of women wrapped in West African beauty, regal and resilient. Wake up, Detroit. Wake up, South Africa. Wake up, Cuba. Wake up, small business owners. Wake up, White House. Wake up, reparations. Wake up, teachers. Wake up women, wake up schools. Sleeping is not an option when the Honorable Joanne Watson is in the room. Wake up Detroit, this is your wake up call. I'm Joanne Watson, Queen Mother Helen Moore in the house. Queen Mother Helen Moore in the house. Uh, we want to say a, a special get well message to Henry Tyler, our Vice President whom we love and respect and we know that uh, God is pouring healing and comfort into him every day. Yes, we yes. send prayers and healing to our brother, our friend, our colleague, the great H.T. Henry Tyler, and uh, much love and respect to you. Praise God from all of us here at WHPR. Thank you, Henry Tyler. We send happy birthday message to my eldest daughter, Adua Nefertari, <laughs> Nefertari Asate and Kenji. Adua. <laughs> Nikki. Adua Nefertari Asate and Kenji. Today is her birthday, and she's beautiful, yes. brilliant, and oh. got a Ph.D. this year. Praise God. All right. Making you got a lawyer proud. and a Ph.D. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> well, praise God. Happy birthday, darling. Happy, happy, happy. Adjo Nefertari Asate and Kenji. Want to uh, welcome Queen Mother Helen Moore. And, you know, first thing we want to say, keep your hands off Helen Moore. 
Oh, Joanne. Keep your hands off Helen Moore. <laughs> oh, Joanne. They thought they saw some action in the Black Panther movie. They ain't seen nothing. Well. Mess with, mess with Helen Moore. I had to come out and tell everybody, all right. They I'm lied. All right. Uh, yeah. You asked for, uh, you, you asked, you I went to the it. protocol. I did everything right, and to, they to still wouldn't the, let on me. on the agenda to speak. Right. And they still and wouldn't let the, me. And then to manhandle you, you, queen mother. <laughs> I could at a, believe at a board it. meeting. Well, You're the guardian for education and have been low these decades, not just for your own children. A grandbaby got your picture up in the DIA, but for all the children in the community. Well, Joanne, I think they thought I was going to shut up when I saw they weren't going to let me speak. And I just, wouldn't, I just wanted the audience to know these people are trying to keep me from speaking, and I did everything right. That's right. And so uh, people heard that. And then when they threw me out, I wouldn't shut up because I, if I did, then they'd get away with That's it. That's right. They stopped me from speaking. That's right. So when the, when the who school district? It's our school it's district. Our, it's our money. Our Whose schools, children? Our children. Our children. These are our schools. I think they got a lesson the Come other on, day somebody. because the whole audience was up on their feet. All of our people was behind me, and when they pulled me up the steps to throw me out, I didn't know it was a side door right up in front, <laughs> but they did. When they pulled me out there to throw me out the door. All these people came rushing, and then uh -huh. the board saw what they had done, and they came out and said, take your hands off of her after they had <laughs> told her ones get, ordered. It ordered me to get arrested. <laughs> so then they sh shuffled me back in. I they want to act for, like they're on the right side. I was side. sore for two days. They My shuffled Lord. me back in and sat down, and then two people from the um, administration came out and said, Miss Moore, would you just volunteer to leave? So I stood up and said, would well, they want me to leave after they set me down? And everybody said, no. That's right. And then finally they dismissed the meeting mm -hmm. and they called another one at 12, I think it was like 12.30 or really was early on Thursday, two days later. And some of us were able to go and we told them how we so felt. But that meeting was called especially yeah, for you. Yeah, yeah, but we, we're going back. We're yeah. going to make sure the community is respected and anybody that sends and does it right can speak. If it had a, The whole allowed, point is to protect our public education. That's, that's right. That's, that's right. the whole point. Protect public education. The person that, that this uh, insane president has been in charge of uh, national education is against public schools, oh, and particularly yes. public schools in Detroit. Especially black people. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Say so that. So we have uh, an obligation, uh, those of us who have been blessed with education, uh, those of us who have been blessed to have children or to have God children, yes. uh, neighborhood children, church children that we right. love and respect, we have to fight for our education. We must do that. And that's what they don't want us to do. They they think that we're just going to sit down because Betsy DeVos is in there and Trump is in is supporting her and all the wealthy people are taking our public money and using it for their own selves. That's what's going on. They take the money and they use it for their own program. That was behind the first school takeover in Detroit. Right. It had nothing to do with education, academic performance. Right. There was no uh, diff deficit with academic. There was no deficit with the money. In fact, there was a surplus. That's right. There was a surplus. You were you were there, Joanne. We were testifying and doing all that in court and testifying for Sharon Madison folk. I never will forget that, how they did the black con contract. Yes. And we were going through all this. But then after all these years, they still don't know how much money they put us in deficit. No. You can go to different financial people for the state. And we went to all the hearing, and each one of them told something different. That's right. But some say 93. Some say Oh, it, it differs depending on who you talk to. Right, but the but the deficit that they caused from the emergency manager ranged from two billion to three billion dollars while they were in place, and that's why they had to divide the school system in, in two. That's right. Finances here, which we still pay for to 2039, and then the the uh, curriculum and all that. That's insane. Most of our people don't have a clue. They don't know as to how the the city of Detroit has been set up on. Right. By right wing evil uh, interlopers. Right. To basically remove self determination and violated our voting rights. Our voting rights are still being violated for the city and the school board. You got that right. And that's why on Tuesday, the first Tuesday of every month at Dexter Elmer, we have a meeting for keep the vote, no takeover, 
we want you to know the real truth. If you come to those meetings at right. 6 o'clock, you will know the truth. We're there. That's right. And they don't put it in then the paper. And we have to fight for the next Salem Center. That's yeah. something else we have to oh fight for. Oh, my God. <laughs> you have to fight for everything. everything. You get nothing unless you stand up and fight for it. You got that right. And no matter how long it takes, you got to still endure You got to do it. got to do it. the end. And the end, I, Lord have mercy, 81 years old, Joanne, I'm still here. Praise and God. I can, yeah, Praise I'm, God. I'm saying, okay, Lord. Praise God. I know you got work for me to keep doing. But we're getting ready, some of these younger parents that come to the meeting for their God. children, we're getting them ready, and they've been well trained yes. as to what's going on, and they're ready for the call. You can't just leave one person That's in right. charge. We have to turn over to the younger That's people exactly to right. keep it going. Because exactly right. actually, Keep the Vote, No Takeover is the only community group that's really out there. Now, we got PTAs they put back in, and they're not doing what they're supposed to do. But you've got to keep a group out there that is concerned and has a history. And it's got to be a the, real yeah. community group. That's right. There, right. there are some it that are pretend yes, yes. Uh, that, that have a parent after the name of the organization, and right. you can be fooled and misled into thinking they're real grassroots. Right. No, 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 no. They've been put in position right. and to represent the power brokers. Yeah, and they're sponsored by corporations like the Skillman Foundation right. and all these people that set up these corporations to completely take us over, make sure our children don't get education, trying to deliver us to Betsy DeVos. My, my, Vouchers my. and charters are in, and they're trying to make sure that our children are in those schools instead of their own public school district. They don't do it to the suburbs. No. They don't do the white district. They wouldn't dare do it. Why do you think? Yeah, they tried in some, and they told them, get back. And they got back. That's right. But when it came to us, we were fighting and everything. They it's didn't care what we said. What has been happening in, in Michigan is apartheid. Yes. Everywhere yeah. black people predominate. Right. Oh, there's been an emergency manager that takes your vote away, takes your self-determination away, takes your rights away disregards elected officials and tells you you have to take it. That's right. That's apartheid. We, yeah, well, you That's institutional racism. Remember that a lawsuit, the first one when That's we right. went all the way to Cincinnati That's and right. always Supreme Court. What did they say when we lawyers got in the back room? That's right. They said to us, we, uh, Sharon was saying, what's your intent? Why are you doing it to our people? They said, because we can. That's right. Nasty stuff. Racist because we can. Mm -hmm. In other words, we don't care. I never forgot that. Mm -hmm. Why y'all think I fight so hard? Because they can't. We gonna That's fight. That's what they to, said about Belle Isle. Because uh, we can. Because we can. Mm -hmm. And they really mean that. Yeah. Until, about the water department. Because we can. Right. Until you stop us, we're gonna keep breaking the law and doing anything That's we can right. to you and your children. Well, they got a couple of black folks here that don't take no mess hey and we've been not taking no mess for a long time i'm sorry y'all but you got to stand up got to stand up you have to fight you have to you can't look the other way and, and rely on other folks to do fight for you right everybody has got to own their part of the mission and that's quite right. frankly uh, i want you to uh, be a support for helen moore queen mother helen moore and all those who keep the vote no takeover because you can't leave it up to somebody else to do your fighting. That's right, and that and that's what's happening. And then the people say, we didn't know this, Mrs. Moore, when I go to speak. Why do you go so many places, Helen Moore, to speak? Because a newspaper won't print it, and you don't know what's happening to you. When I went to one meeting for the EAA before we broke that up, the parents sitting up there, and I said, um, you know, we got to get rid of the EAA. And they were saying, what's the EAA? No, and it was the EAA school. There. They didn't even they didn't know even their know. children were in the EAA. See, we can't rely on the uh, so-called uh, daily media because all, all they're concentrating on uh, during this period is the women spanking the president. <laughs> <laughs> we have to focus on... <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. We have to focus on the rights and the services and the programs that ought to be afforded our children. That's we, right. are, we are the vehicles to fight for our children, to safeguard the interests of our children. We cannot leave it up to somebody else. It's our job. Who do the children have? Come on, somebody. It's us, and we got to recognize that. Would you allow that? I keep wondering about VD. He got four black children in the school system, and some of the others are connected with children in the school system and have children yes how could you do your own children My Lord. like that My or do Lord. they think that way come on somebody. are they do they have allegiance to the people that put them in 
which weren't us? Or do they have allegiance to the children, the black and brown children, that are being deprived of a quality education? Something is wrong with this picture. That's right. That's right. And anytime you let somebody like Mike Duggan come in and run the system and get up with his state of of the city uh, speech and talk about, I'm going to make a plan for you, and somebody, somebody told me to do it and was all right. We haven't found that person or those folks that told him to do make a plan so he can get contracts for people. He's always doing that. He gets contracts out of public money. When are we going to stop him from doing that? We're already paying twice what it uh, takes to tear down houses. I know it. Instead of, instead of build, fixing a them up. A man came to me yesterday. Oh, Lord. A, a, a citizen who thought I was still on the council. He said, <laughs> what can I do to get <laughs> To get some money to help me and my wife pay my time. We about to lose a house. I said, well, darling, as, uh, first of all, I'm, I'm no longer in, in office. However, the answer to that question is the hardest hit money, millions of dollars that were sent from the federal government to the state intentionally targeting Detroit. Detroit people were, should have been receiving thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to help them hold on to their home so they wouldn't be foreclosed on. Right. And that money being, in my view, illegally used to tear down houses instead yes. of helping people hold on to their house. That's why it's called hardest hit. That's hardest right. hit funds are hit intended for those families who've been hardest hit by the economic downturn to help them hold on to their house, but also help our population. That's right. And that that's a scheme and a plot, and it's really to make sure that we aren't in the city. That's right. That's what they're doing getting us out and those who moved i feel sorry for you because you ain't gonna be able to move back in my, my, my. the other folks are moving in and they're gonna raise taxes and everything so high you will never get back into detroit so i think it's time we wake up what is it what, wake what, up what is detroit your, all right wake Joanne, up detroit say that wake up detroit we gotta wake up and nobody wakes us up better than queen mother helen moore <laughs> now the keep the vote no takeover meeting is gonna come up soon yeah it's next week and la and that is at six o'clock dexter elmhurst center you all need to come and find out now what what's day happening. is it it's on tuesday tuesday find out what's going on with your children because we, we know where the bodies are buried so you need to come and find out and lift some of these bodies Get ready to bury them further because there's some more coming that's harming our children like Betsy DeVos. You got the mayor. You got the governor. You got John Engler back on the scene. Have Lord, mercy. Have, have mercy. mercy. It never stops. So We have an opportunity to step in and transform our condition. And we cannot just work in one little piece of the problem right, because right. they're all connected. Sure. The same people who are stealing the contract dollars for Detroit public schools yes. are the ones uh, engaged in corruption and collusion with the, with the contract dollars with the city of Detroit. Right. That's why both of them are targets for takeover. There's the same group of people who were engineered the school takeover are part of the city of Detroit takeover, both of which are still under uh, unconstitutional oversight. That's right. Isn't that weird? I went to the city council meeting last week, and they showed up the contractors. It's the same situation. We ain't, the mayor we ain't paid us. We, we've been waiting for months. Ain't that the same thing they did with the contractors? That's the same thing. Bart Mallow and That's everything. Right. That's right. The mayor makes them feel good. He says, I'm going to give you a job, and y'all do what I say. And then they do it, and then they get thrown under the bus. Sure. Say, we're going to go out of business. They use their demographics yeah. for the reports. Right. Right. Uh, but then, then they kick them out and don't pay them. Right, and don't pay them. And it's public money. It's our money. And well, when are they going to wake up? The, uh, the, I used to have to, when I was on the council, I used to have to make them, the planning department, uh, allocate the senior citizens' housing repair money to them because, of course, I came, I had worked for Conyers, so I knew the congressional uh, oh yes budget said that you have a right to give senior home repair money to senior citizens in your community. Makes sense so to the, me. So when the, when the staff would say, oh, we can't, I say, yes, you can. Go back and read the HUD ch Section 3. Read your own <laughs> HUD regulation. It's HUD money. It doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the people. If they only knew how we, we talk to each other and research things. That's right. Thank you, Joanne, for the court case that you gave me <laughs> last week. You're welcome. <laughs> and all the research. <laughs> 
and all the research we have working for us is wonderful. We we have research that says that the city is not just and the lawyers. executive branch. The city is, according to the Justice Department, yes. the executive branch and the legislative branch collectively as a city. That's why this whole bankruptcy has been illegal, because neither the executive branch or the legislative branch ever looked at or approved the bankruptcy filing. It was only looked at, filed by Kevin Orr, who was an appointee of the governor. Right. And the governor bought him in here because he was a bankruptcy attorney. And you taught All me, of it was illegal. You taught me, and when I read the case, it's dual power. Yes. And they don't take their power. No. So no. I presented it to the city council. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I know they don't know their and, own power. And I gave it to was, was the, their lawyer. Yeah. It's presented David the Whitaker. Thing. Why don't you just yes. follow the law? And why don't you just take your power? We had to why make them do that when Marianne Mahaffey was alive and when Chairman McPhail was on council. Yes. We had to make the mayor's office uh, uh, afford the proper respect to council when the consent decree was going on. Right. When the U.S. Justice Department, we asked for the consent decree because they were mishandling prisoners. Right, right. And, and not treating and, and using excessive force with our folks. And even the uh, confinement for those who were put in jail was, was terrible. It was horrific. That's right. And there's no excuse for them not taking their power. That's Nothing right. Nothing concedes power but a demand. That's what Frederick Douglass said. And you, said. Frederick Douglass said it. So take your power. Take your power. And wait a minute. Nobody's going to give it to you. Take it. Guess what I slipped into the package, Joanne? You know, I give them a package. Yes. Willie Litt syndrome. <laughs> I test. Did you get them yeah, it? It was at the back of the package. I hope they all read it. I really do. Well, that's why she's queen mother. <laughs> I, I had to laugh when I, they passed the packages around. I love it. I said, they don't know what a bombshell this is. Come Willie on, somebody. Lynch syndrome is in there. I'm trying to tell them, take your power, that's wake right. up, and stop giving your power to the white man. That's right. Because you think his ice is colder My than, Lord. than yours. My Lord. So... Joanne is. We got a fight on our hand. Here we go again. Oh yeah, we have to fight. Oh, we my have to fight. God. And we want everybody to get involved. Show up at the Keep the Vote No Takeover meeting on Tuesday right. at six o'clock on Dexter and Elmhurst at the Dexter Elmhurst Center. That's another some institution we had to fight for. Fight. It wouldn't be open were it not for Queen oh, Mother Helen Moore. And you, Joanne, sent your whole staff, sent your staff <laughs> member to work at the center to keep it open when they wanted to close it and give it to. Who did they want to give it to? Well, I uh, never found uh, out. Uh, back then, Granholm said she just had to close it because the budget wouldn't allow it. I said, that's not true. It doesn't cost anything. It's just the utility. And wait a minute. They well, I don't have any staff budget for it. Okay. <laughs> I'll send my staff to keep it open. They finally gave it to us for a dollar. But yeah. They, but they didn't do all the repairs. We I know they did. all our time. It had nothing roof. to do with the budget. It never had, it had to do right. with, they it was do. not a priority because it was only serving black people. And can you believe that the state put this, uh, those cylinders up there, those pieces that you put up there, sure. and covered up the, uh, the fire water thing? Now we got to fi fix it. So please, it's a wonderful thing because the community needs it, but people don't know what we go through in order to be free and in order to have something for our children, our community. That, and you have to do that. You have to stand and fight. There was, I was just one voice. The whole the council never voted on. You were by, was by yourself. Yeah, but, but, but you have the power of the people who put you in office. Right. And that's what I, I tried to tell a city council member last year. I said, you have the power. I said, I used to convene meetings by myself all the time on the 13th floor. You don't, you don't have to have everybody with you. Joanne, you have the power to convene. You did all those resolutions. I bet you did more resolutions than anybody you know, has the, ever the, been on the, the state The racist council. press likes to uh, uh, cast a, a negative piece on anything that's black-led. I did 20,000 laws during my 10 I, years. I believe it because I know about that. I know what you did. And they ne you know, they never talked about it. The Nation magazine uh, passed something in 2009 that said I was the most valuable local elected official because they were getting an analysis of all my legislation. Yeah, and they, what they do is try to destroy, they, they've done it to I all know. of us, try to That's destroy what, you with something stupid. Yeah. And the sad part about it, some of our people believe I know all that do. stuff. I know. And that's how they get to them. But what we got to do now is stand up for those that are standing up for us. We got to stand up for those that mean, that are righteous for our children that understand what our children are going through. Joanne, how do you think they closed that Palmer Park school when the when the, the emergency managers left the roof leaking? It's all over the system. We've been telling them, you're not repairing anything. So how could we be 
two billion dollars in deficit. Come on now. Where's the money? Well, we know they got Barbara Bird Bennett, but that's way back with Bob's time. Right, right. But it kept going through all the emergency managers, and what's what's happening with that? They've been Earl. stealing money. Right. We, we don't have, have an the, accounting. We can't get an audit. There, there needs to be two billion dollars. A, a real audit. They won't. They tell a us. A forensic audit needs to take place. They Overdue. Say they can't afford it. They can't but afford they can not afford. to do it. That's right. And we've been pressuring them and pressuring them. It's a cover-up somewhere, and we're paying for because it. Because there was never a financial deficit. The takeover was a fraud. That's right. It was racist. It was con they conspired that. to take the contract dollars. That's what, $1.5 billion. You That's kept exactly. talking about it, and we kept telling them, this is a takeover of our money. They That's don't right. care nothing about our and, and it was a dress rehearsal for the takeover of the city. Oh, because yeah. Because the biggest oh, yeah. asset they wanted was the water department. Oh, oh. And Bell all Isles. those years. And the land. All those years we've held them back, you know. It's like we had our finger in the dike. That's you know, it. The water was coming That's through. That's it. And then they finally got the right people in there. Yep. I have never honored the mayor because he didn't get in there legally. Anybody that thinks the mayor got in there with a write-in campaign and didn't go down to Cobo Hall to see what we saw, something is wrong. And they still, when he walks in the room, they still start shouting. He's, he's killed us in our schools, and he's still trying to be involved. And I'm telling him at the meeting, get back. I told him and when they had the meeting on Thursday after they threw me out. I said, why are y'all letting him run the school system? He's already messing up the city. Why do you do that? It, it's against the charter. That's not a, that, that is not an it's activity. It's a separate corporation. That, that is not something that the city officials should be involved in. It's anti the charter. It has not been approved or voted on by anybody. That's you can't right. just do what you want to do. Right, but you, but you can if you think like they told us. We can do anything we want to till you stop us. My, my, my. And that's why I spend my whole life trying to stop them and take make sure the kids get an education. Queen Mother hard. should not have to fight by herself, should not have to stand with a, 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 a modest band of people because everybody's impacted by the Troy Public Schools. All of us who have watched them uh, decimate our neighborhoods and our communities by closing schools, which uh, led to blighted houses, open vacant houses, caused so many of our neighborhoods to look like they've been bombed out. Yes, and it's getting worse. We have a responsibility to change. We can change that if we take control, if we organize. The well, same way those children from Florida organized and did I a march. I love it. I loved it we too. Used, we used to be like I that. If you remember, I, Joey, I know we it. could snap our finger and like organize. Kennedy Square. That's right. One day we had to get them people down there. Hundreds of thousands showed up and it was That's packed. Right. When we went to Cincinnati, the bus, how many bus, girl, how many buses did we have? And we had three buses. No, it was more than that, Joey, and I got the pictures. Went to, to Cincinnati? When we went to Cincinnati. Because you had your granddaughter there. I sure did. It was about 12, 15 buses. That's how many people. Remember Rose You're right. Hill You're right. oh, and my all of them? They had to line us up all around they some sure square. Did. They sure did. Yeah, it was a whole lot. That's what was happening back but then. But we also raised money. Yeah, we did. We did. From the people. Right here. No corporations, no yes. foundations. Right. We raised our own we money. We raised our own money. So when we said. But people who had no money gave money. So when I hollered out at the board about you need to sue because. We caught them now. they are taking our money. There needs to be a lawsuit. Well, that's when I got thrown out of the meeting. But then I didn't get a chance to holler, don't tell me we ain't got no money because it's keep the vote. And, then, and our coalition raised all that money sure for the did. first lawsuit. Sure did. We can do Took it, it to again. The federal court. You don't need to talk about board members that you don't have money. You have a community and you have people that are concerned about the children. All you got to do is file it and we raise the money. That tells you something. It does. Yep. The city's paying uh, $300 million a year to Blue Cross Blue Shield. Overpaying. Why? Uh, I don't know about that. Uh-huh. Overpaying. Okay. So don't let folks tell you the city has no money. Why they they You could get insurance from anybody for much less than half the cost that the city's right now paying to Blue Cross Blue Shield. It's about the, the federal the, the hookup. All our money goes to public money. Yeah. goes to all these different things. And we get no benefit from it. Are we? Are we a bunch of suckers? My my Is that my. what they think about? My it? my my. Are we suckers? And they just say, "Well, look, they just." Poor How long, black Lord? How, How long? long? I swear, make you <laughs> mad when you think about talking about two Detroit. The mayor say, "Ain't no two Detroit." 
Well, I live in apartheid. Some kind of, yeah, right. It's apartheid. It's you know, it's it's not even up for debate. And you know it too. All you have to do is live here. Was he still here? Is he in Livonia? Where is he? I live in Detroit. The line and the demarcation is so clear. I drove all the way here, mm-hmm. and everywhere I looked, I saw blight, decimation, and, and people standing on demolition, the trying to get to work, and children waiting on the bus that wasn't coming, and a and a mama with about three or four children, come on, somebody standing out there, and some of them trying to eat an apple or something Lord on have their mercy. way to school. That's the Detroit I live in. Where where are they living? I was driving down Jefferson one day and, and I had to stop and pick up a little mother I don't even know who was standing there with a, a baby in arm and one down yes, here yes. trying to get to a medical appointment. And she looked like she was about to drop. Uh, listen, look, Dexter Elmhurst. I had to convince her I was all right. I said, baby, I just want to help you. You're right. I don't want you to faint with these babies out here. You, oh, Lord. And, and this weather. Every day, I'm sitting at Dexter Elmhurst last year waiting on people to come and get their water because, you know, we were part of the water brigade, yep. mm-hmm. uh, Monica and uh, Patrick. And I was just sitting there waiting, and this this young mother came by in her stroller, and she had one baby, pretty much newborn, and a smaller one, maybe a year and a half, and she knocked on the thing, and I opened the door, she, and she came in. She said, Aren't we so thirsty? And I we had run out of water. And I was sitting there to tell people we don't have any more water. And all I could think about, let me go look in the refrigerator. I found some pops. Praise God. I did. I found some pops in there. And they sit there and they drink. She she gave it to the little one where the baby was there. And she guzzled it down. But as she left there, I cried like a baby. My Lord. I said, Lord, you blessed me and my four children. And we got so many blessings. But look at Look what's happening in our father, city. Father, father. We ain't got no places or businesses around us. The people, one man came to get water, and he took two of those big cases of water, and I went and peeked around the corner to see how he was carrying it down. Uh, Dex, no, he went down Elmhurst. He was about five houses, and it was blighted, and he took the water and was about to drop it, and I just, I didn't know what to say. So late that night, I started going around the neighborhood and saying, all these people coming in here for water, I stopped them from signing in because the state says you water turned off, you can take, they can take your children away from oh my. you. So I go around and say, let me look and see what's happening. Lights go out, and the whole, all the blocks that I went up and down, there no lights in the house. So they are without lights and water. My Lord. Now, how could you sit there as a mayor and, and take money from the public with the money is supposed to go to? Well, see, you need advocates. The churches need to get on board. Oh, Lord. And churches. stop selling out. They, look. They, they, they're they adding drain fees to the, to the bills that they cannot afford to pay. Right, right. But, see, if you don't do right, sooner or later, come back on Come you. on, somebody. It'll affect you and your family and your family. You can't just and your do people. pastor's anniversary. Now, this is Holy Week. Uh, all right, Reverend. This is holy. I know you don't do that at your <laughs> church, Reverend Reverend Watson. I know you don't do that, but it's hard when you see people doing that to their own people. How do we get our people to realize that we have rights and that we shouldn't accept second class citizenship? In the How same way that, that Jesus fed bread and fish, a miracle. Five loaves of bread. By blessing it. Before he preached to the masses, he fed the masses. So we have to take care of our people. We can't just lead them to a a faith vehicle. We have to feed the flesh as well as the spirit. And we're required to make sure our children are educated. Our homes have light and water. Our people have dignity and jobs. Right. And And that our families are taken, that our elders are protected. Queen Mother Helena Moore, nobody that. Somebody ought to be afraid to put their hands on Helen Moore. Well, they sure were dragging me, too. Somebody ought to be afraid to put their hands on Helen Moore. And I didn't know they were coming, Joanne. I'm sitting up in front. When is the next school board meeting? It's, uh, it's April the 10th at Mumford High School, 530. Mm-hmm. Does that tell you anything? Maybe we all to show up like the old yeah. time. Yeah. And we need to see who really is concerned mm-hmm. about the children. Yeah. By showing up at 530 at Mumford, at Mumford High, High School. school and see what happens. 
I guess some of us should ask to be on the agenda yeah. again. Yeah. The, isn't that our right? Didn't, I think so. Then we win that Open Meetings Act. Remember we that? We won that. We had to we fight for that. that. We had to fight for that when they didn't want us. You we know. had to fight for public education. We had to fight Brown for Brown versus Hey, and, and Linda Brown is, she just passed who, away. Just passed away Bless this her week. Heart. God rest her soul. Yes, Lord. So it's the fighters that keep us going and win for us. We're not free yet, people. And we won't be free until we keep fighting, until they let us go. Let my people go. Let my people go. We saying, we all are saying that, oh, freedom. Oh, freedom. Oh, freedom. Me. Oh, freedom. Oh, that's right. Oh, freedom. Before, before, I, be a slave, before I be a slave, I be buried in, in my, my grave, grave and go home to, to my Lord and, and be, be free. free. And that was our song. Come Jordan. on now. That was our song, <laughs> keep the vote, fighting for the right to have a quality education and a, and a board that we voted for, an elected board. Look how long it took. Praise God. And now we got it, and we killed the EAA, and we did all that, and they started the back over. The fight continues. And the we're going to show over. up at the Keep the Vote No Takeover next Tuesday at 6 o'clock. That's the Elmer Center. 6 o'clock next Tuesday, April 3rd, and then a week from next Tuesday, going to show up at Mumford oh, yeah. for the Board of Education meeting. That's also at 6 o'clock. Yes. At 6 o'clock. This is how you do it. This is how we did it. And, We're and call and get on the agenda, 313-494-1000. <laughs> That's right. Get on the agenda. Get on the agenda. And take your rights and tell them what we want them to do for our children. Did you know they're supposed to represent our children? That's right. That's right. Not the mayor, not the governor, not somebody with some money, but they're supposed to represent our children. Thank you very much, Queen Mother Helen Moore, for representing all of us so well. Well, and thank you for your your brilliant grandson Mario Morrow, who's got <laughs> a, a, a magnificent tribute, a triumphant rendering of his grandmother at the DIA, that's been seen around the world. I love that all over the world. Praise grand. God. You know what, Joanne? Didn't you take that baby to Africa with the yeah, Malcolm yeah, X Academy? Yeah, Malcolm X Academy. Look, Joanne working hard for everybody else's children. We are working for hard for ours and look how God blessed us. Praise God. Look at look at the granddaughter. I just love that child and your your girls and Nina's coming home for Easter. So Come on that's now. your child's uh -oh. coming home. Uh -oh. So anyway, you know we are blessed. Nina got that fire beautiful and fiery like her mama. <laughs> that's my girl. Yes. We Lord. give God all the praise. God alone is worthy to be praised. You ought to find an opportunity somewhere to celebrate and commemorate Good Friday on tomorrow, a Monday, Thursday, tonight, and a certainly Resurrection Day on this Sunday, giving God all the praise. Wake up, Detroit.